What's up guys, welcome to another edition of Toothpicks. It's been a long time coming, but guess what? It's right before Christmas, it's right before New Year's. Probably should have put this a few days out ago, but guess what, we're gonna do it right now. I'm doing brisket today, Texas style. I'm doing it on the Weber Summit charcoal grill, and we're gonna show you some new things. Um, not too much has changed. I learned a few things over the years. Guess what, I got a sharper knife for some of you haters on there that say I need a sharper knife that can tell through the video. I got a sharp knife today, and we're going to be cooking a prime brisket from Costco. Everybody usually has a Costco membership. Some people got Sam, some people don't. But we're going to cook a prime brisket and see how long it takes and see how well it comes out. Stay tuned. Alright guys, so look, here we go. I got about a 17 pound brisket I'm going to do, but I'm going to trim this down. When I trim this down, I may take about one and a half, two pounds down. I'm not going to do too much crazy stuff on this brisket, but I'm going to take some of the silver skin off. I'm not going to do too much. If I was competing, then yeah, I will be definitely trimming this thing down to the bare minimum that I can get on the fat. But let's just show you some things I can do. I got another uh, video you can refer to if you need some more help as far as trimming this brisket. So let's just go ahead and trim this one up and see what I need to do, guys. So let's get the brisket where you want to get it. What you're looking for is some of this silver skin right here. You can see it looks kind of grayish. You want to get some of that stuff off. You want to get some of this hard fat off. Some of this deco that goes through this um, point right here. So you got the flat and the point just in case you guys didn't know that. Any gray meat, I'm going to turn this this other way that you may see. Some of that right there may be coming off, you know. And then, of course, I'm going to trim this. Uh-oh, take that back. I'm going to trim some of this hard fat off the top down to about a quarter inch uh, right there. Some of this stuff doesn't need to be trimmed. It's already close right there. Oh, this wind is blowing pretty good, guys. Excuse me on that. So I'm going to trim that down right there. So, let's go on and get to do it. Let's start on the top side right here. Let's get some of this trimming going. And I'm going to turn it the way I want it to be comfortable. And hopefully you guys can still see some of that right there. So, what I'm going to do. Now, I'm going to let this stay cold. Guys, I took this out the fridge. And the best way to do this is to let it stay cold because it's easier to trim. I got a bowl over here on the side in my um, little sink right here. And I'm going to put all that fat that I don't want in there. Take some of that off and be careful not to cut into the meat. It's going to get this trimmed up. So while you're watching that, I'm going to go ahead and trim this up. And we're going to let the uh, magic of time show you how I do this. All right, guys, so I kind of just fast-forwarded everything, went through all what I had to do on as far as the trimming. Just show you what I did, guys. Like you see, all that silver skin in the beginning, you saw that was all over this, a lot of uh, little fat sp uh, spots right here. I got a, a bunch of that out so I, can, I wanted to get off. You can work this thing as long as you want. Um, that deco, that hard piece of fat, let's just turn this and show you. It kind of runs through this. This is where that flat meets that point over here on the side. And I went through as far as I wanted to on that. I didn't want to go too far because, like, I'm not, I'm not competing, guys. I want, I like a little fat, and a wife does too, if y'all remember that. And it goes on the other side, so I did a little trimming on that it also. On this side, it had a lot of brown fat um, meat that was on the side from the um, process when the butcher was cutting it, and I trimmed a lot of that off on here on the side, right here, as much as I wanted to. Uh, cleaned it up a little bit. If I turn this over, and I took this down to about a quarter inch. Some of this is already really pretty thin on the um, on the fat cap, but I trimmed it down. And you can see, if I fold this, how it's almost about a quarter inch right there, guys. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. I got it in this pan now. And as you can see from this angle right here, the grain kind of runs this way and runs up on this flat. So what I do, I'm going to make me an indication point. And what I really do on that, I'll take this knife and I kind of go down right here. 
cut that little piece off. Maybe give it to my dog. For some of you that know Nightmare, he's not with us no more. He passed away about a month or two ago. So I have a little Maltese, but it's probably a little too big for him. So I'm going to put it in here in this bowl. And this right here tells me where I want to start my cuts when I get ready to take this off. I'm going to go against the grain, guys. And I'm going to go all the way up. And it doesn't really curve. It all seems to ready on this brisket go like this. A lot of briskets, they're pretty much different, guys. And uh, for this cut of meat, that's how I'm going to do it. So let's just show you right now. Let's go to the next step, guys. And what I'm going to do right now, this is enough stickiness on this brisket. I'm going to wipe my hands a little bit, get my hands cleaned up. And, yeah, I'm not using gloves. I'm in my own house. Um, take care of business. My hands are clean. Wash your hands. A lot of chefs, if you've been to culinary school, I went to culinary school a little bit. And, you know, a lot of people in the kitchen, hand, um, gloves can get contaminated because people don't know how to take them off and keep changing them. So you just wash your hands real good. That's why they have sanitation sinks in kitchens. I got me a new injector, guys. I will use olive oil. You can if you want. You can use mustard if you want, any kind of binder you want. But today, I'm going to let the juice be the binder. Got my rubs right here on the, on the side right here. And I'll clean these off because I'm touching it, as, as you can see. So that's the salt and pepper right there, kosher salt, kosher black pepper. A little bit what I had of what I made up over here. And I got this 1836 rub by Suckle Busters. I like for, uh, it's a beef rub I've been liking um, usually. Usually I just use the salt and pepper, but I'm going to use a little combination of both. So what I got this primed up, guys. And all you do is squeeze this chigger, hold this in the air till it's primed up. I made me a concoction, guys, of this right here is um, apple juice right here and a little bit of that Allegro. And I put this in a um, my little Ninja and I mixed it up so that some of that hard particles can get um, grinded up real fine. So that way I can come through my um, come through my injection. And I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do, guys, I'm gonna inject with the grain. So let's do this. Let's put it in there, squeeze a little bit, and it might squ squeeze out a little bit. Kind of go in a little formation, go deep, come out, come up. And w with this injector, guys, and I'll put a link to it. I don't ever have to dip my needle in and have to keep trying to pump it up it keeps pumping that stuff as it go if you can see it in the corner i don't know if you can see it in the corner as you can see the level going down and i'm gonna hit it all in this uh oh still got some injection let me turn it around all right so i saved that the the point runs a different direction it runs like this a little bit kind of going like this you can kind of see it can't really see that on there guys but what i would do is go on the side and go through that let's put that in there okay some little funny little bloopers right here <laughs> so this is live so you know you're not getting no fake stuff with me go through that get that juice all in that point i want flavor in this guys i like flavor some people they don't like they don't like to use some people got you know high blood pressure i got high blood pressure but you know i'm bad a little bit you know sometimes i shouldn't eat a lot of salt and stuff but shoot is good <laughs> but take care of myself too so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna kind of pat this right here pat this dry a little bit some of that juice came out guys turn this over not all the juice came out some of it came out, but a lot of it stayed in there, guys. Clean your area as you go. Throw that in there. Take another paper towel right there. Kind of get your area cleaned up a little bit. I'm outside today. I'm not in my kitchen. It's, it's about 60 degrees out today here in December in Texas. All right, guys. So I got that done right there. Got my injection finished right there. Get my hands wiped again. Put my trash right there. Wipe my hands up, and I'm gonna use one hand. I'm gonna turn this around, guys, so you can see it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hit the bottom first. Got my bottom, my top is gonna be my display. I'm smoking this um, fat side up today. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hit it with this little mix that I have. One part to one part pepper, one part kosher salt. And you need coarse grain, guys, coarse grain. Put a little bit of um, garlic pepper in here also, guys, just to let you know that. <laughs> add little things here and there. You can add whatever you want in your rub, but 
mostly here in Texas. I'm not in Central Texas, but you know, in Central Texas, they really use the um, the black pepper and kosher salt only. Not, and that's really all you need, guys. I mean, you don't really need a lot, man. You want to taste this beef. I don't soak my my briskets in Coca-Cola like some people do. I don't do none of that stuff that's unnecessary. But if you want to do it, go ahead. You know, go right ahead. You know, it's nothing wrong with what you want to do in your own house. So let me get, stop talking and let me just show you how I'm doing this rub right here. Get a good coat on that. This is my base layer. I want to get up in here too. Get over on the side. Get all on your edges and everything. Right there. Cover all your brisket, guys. I want a good bark. Okay. Let me get this. Put this down. Keep it from sliding. Probably should have put a paper towel under there. I'm going to hit it with my other rub. Probably should have hit this before I turn it over, but it's all right. We're going to make it work, guys. Make it do what it do. Let's hit it with that 1836. Hit it all on the side right there. There it is. So I'm a, I ain't got that much left. I'm going to use the rest of this, guys. I'm going to hit this all on top. I'm going to cover it. We're going to have a good bark. All those peppercorns coming out, and that's done right there, guys. So let's just show you. Look at that right there evenly covered just about good bark's gonna be i got a season on both sides i got it injected and what i'm gonna do with this guys i'm gonna put this back in the fridge until i'm ready to cook this i prepped this maybe about two two hours maybe three hours before i'm really gonna start my cook when i come back we'll take this out i'm gonna let this come to room temperature while i'm gone once i take it out the fridge let it come to almost room temperature you can do that with beef it's pretty much safe and it might be a couple degrees under room temperature and I'm going to show you when I come back how I'm going to get my smoker started. Stay tuned. All right, guys. So here we back. I'm going to show you how I got my Weber um, Summit charcoal set up. Right here, I got my charcoal set up in like a, you know, like a circle pattern right here. Some people call it a snake, but it's not ending on any any um, point. So what I'm gonna do, I got some charcoal already lit, as you saw. I'm just gonna pour this right in the middle. Right there in the middle. And this is gonna help everything get started. And what this is gonna do, guys, this is gonna allow everything to smoke real slow. Um, what I'm shooting for today, guys, is about 235, maybe 240. Um, not 225 you know I found with um, prime beef that you can cook a little hotter with it um, the, the higher quality is the hotter you can cook that's why some of them guys they're always cooking um, real hot and fast but you know I've tried that before but I, today I'm preferring my old fat side up method so what I'm gonna do right now guys I'm gonna throw some wood up here and I, what I got is some pecan just some chunks as you see some little chunks right here this Western um cons right here and they're about you know maybe about this big right here so i'm just gonna throw these around kind of put these all over the place and as this smokes throughout the night it'll hit these different pieces of wood throw that over there some of my charcoal um it's left over from another cook but it wasn't burnt out all the way so what i did was you know it had some um some wood in it already and it's just gonna it just caught fire again so as much wood in there as you want and you know, I'll throw this over here and that should be enough right there and once you get that right here 
I'm going to throw a baffle. So this char this uh, smoker comes with a baffle, guys. Mine is a little bit dirty. I use this so much. And this baffle right here allows us to cook um, indirect right here. So now, you know, I don't have to cook with fat side down. Um, not a lot of distance in between that um, and the, the fire and the meat. So this shields the meat right here. And another thing I like to do, guys, I'll put a little drip pan in here. The little drip pan right there. And what I'll do now, I'm going to throw my rack here on top. Okay, just like that. Okay, and then I'm going to open up my vents all the way on the bottom. All right, and get this thing flowing. And I'm going to let it come up. Close that down. And I'm going to raise this up, guys. I want you to see something. Right there on the top, as you saw in some other videos. I'm going to get this a little sticky right now. Right there. There we go. Get that going right there. And this is going to allow that temperature right up in here, guys. This thing is going to shoot up real kind of fast, guys. And it's going to get that thing burning pretty good. Should be almost ready to go. But I want my, my racks a little hot when I start. Okay, so when I come back, guys, we're going to throw this brisket down. Once I get the temp, I'm going to throw this brisket on. And before I do that, while, when I come back, I already have water in that bottom pan just so it won't burn and that grease won't sizzle and burn too much. But that's, that grease kind of gives it um, a little more flavor. Also, then I'll throw a little bowl on the side in there, and I'll show you what I'll do with that. Stay tuned. All right, guys, so let's get this brisket on. You can see I got a little temperature pro right here. By This is the smoke right here. This is my smoke alarm. This is by um, Thermalworks right here. So I'm going to be using this today, guys. Up to says 240. So you know when I open this, of course, the temperature is going to go down. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to get this brisket on, guys. Let that up right there. I got me some water right here in another bowl. I got a drip pan with a little bit of water. I got my probe right here, and I'm gonna come over here in front of this camera right here, guys. And I'm gonna lay this brisket right here over this pan. It's not gonna cover all the pan. It's pretty big. And as this goes today, the guys, it's gonna shrink a little bit. We get some shrinkage on that. A lot of that fat will fall in there. But there's a hot spot all the way around this um, summit, guys, and it comes up right above here. But as this smoke comes up, the reason I got it fast up because it comes up and it rolls over. The heat rolls over the top instead of coming right on it. So I need it protected on the top. And what I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to uh, get this right here. I'm going to get it closed down. All right. Get my vents where I want it. And I've been using this for a little while now. I pretty much got it set to where I think it's going to be good. With meat in there, it's going to come up there um, a little um, less in temperature. It's going to take a little while to come up. Plus, I got moisture in there. Get my hands wiped off. And all you can do now, guys, once you got this coming up, and as you see, it's almost, if you can see this, you know, you can't really see it. It's almost back at 200, 159 right here. Got me some Shiner Frost. I just saw this yesterday, guys. I just decided to pick it up, never had it. But I'm a Shiner guy. Going to get that pop right there. Pretty dang good, shit. Excuse my language. Oh, I know I'm, this is this is not an advertisement, guys. But I got this little Yeti koozie right here. Keeps my beer cold because I'm just a, I'm just a sipper today, guys. I'm not really trying to get real drunk. I'm on call for work, so a little sipper right here. So next time I come, I hit it with a couple sprays. You know, I'm gonna probably be checking this about. I would say about every four hours i'm gonna check this and i'm gonna hit it with a spray and once i get the bark i want there's no need before i say that there's no need for an internal temperature probe to start off because i'm looking for the bark where i want to wrap it at i'm gonna wrap it in butcher paper the guys last time i believe i wrapped it in foil but i'm gonna wrap it in butcher paper today 
It's coming up 195. Might need to open my vents up a little bit to get it up a little bit. Then I'll crack it back. Just got to play with the smoker a little bit as you're going off and on to get your right temperatures. But I'm never going to touch that bottom one unless I lose too much heat. But like I said, it's not cold today. If it was real cold, I would be having to crack that bottom open a little more. But this thing pretty much holds temp once you get it set, once it gets rolling. So stay tuned, guys. I have a little clips in between showing how I'm doing this. Not too many. And we're going to let it roll. I'm not going to touch it. Stay tuned. All right, guys, so I did a little peek on this, and I think this is about ready to wrap. I got the park I want. May night is a little dark outside. It's probably around 11 o'clock at night, about five, um, four and a half hours since I saw you last time. Let's just open this up. Let the smoke roll out. Good, nice bark. I'm just curious. Let's take the temperature, see what happens. Got my thermal pen right here. 161, 177. It's cooking pretty fast, guys. And it's been hanging out at, I mean, I'm talking about, shoot, 238, 240. I mean, that flat's almost done. This guy's, like I said, my experience with um, 182 over there, 181, 179. It's 169 here in the back, 168, 160. So it's past the stall just about. And we're going to go ahead and take this off. And we're going to go ahead and wrap it. And I'm going to end up resting it for the rest of the night um, after I get it up to temp. And we're going to go ahead and, you know, take this off right here. I know I keep saying that. So let's go ahead and do it. <laughs> so got my paper right here. Got some butcher paper. I got two pieces of butcher paper. I'm going to lean this back right here. So it just stay up and I brought my butcher paper more up this way because I want to set it down this way on on the top so I got these little claws because I don't this, this thing's hot pick it up put that right there in the middle right there all right so trick to this guys let's close this up right here trick to this is basically you want to roll this up and fold and then roll again and roll again okay until the top part um, the uh, bottom part fo um, hits the bottom so what I'm gonna do is usually scoot this back right here I'm gonna flip it one time guys flip it one time as you see it's not burnt on the bottom you see it's not burnt on the bottom whatsoever right there so what i do i like to take these set them right there this both pieces of paper i'm gonna take my little pieces off and i apologize for the light just a little more over here fold this over like this reason you have to do this with bigger some of the smaller bristles you, you don't really have to do this with turn that in that way fold those in so I get that real tight right there okay okay so I got that real tight kind of fold that in fold it in like this see how that's going and what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take it and tuck and I'm gonna wrap. Now we have the bottom. Okay. That's the top right there. Bottom. Tuck it. And what I'm gonna do, I'll take this and do it just like that. Tuck some of these in. Set this back on the smoker. Raise it back up. Still at 200. Kind of um, clean off my rack a little bit. I'm going to set this right back in the middle. 
just like that. And I'll take another probe and I'll put it in this and I'll monitor the internal meat temperature. And when it gets about 195, 198, I'll take it off and let it rest. And there we go. Close it up, let it roll. Stay tuned. All right, guys. So it's about four, four o'clock in the morning. I think this thing is about ready to go on the warmer box. So let's just take a look at it. Open it up. I'm reading about 195 on my temperature gauge. See how well, if you don't have a uh, meat thermometer or anything, what you do, you can take an ice pick or some like sm small and sharp. Just see if it goes through like butter. See how it's going through just like that? That's paper, just like butter right there. And that tells me it's done. In fact, let's just look at it. About 195 right there. Just like butter. All right, so let's go ahead and take this off. That's giving me a good temp. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take this off. I got a Cambro warming box I keep at the house. Take that out. Easy, just like that. I got a pan. Put this pan down. And, man, I can feel how... how um, tender that is. That thing, I mean, it feels soft under there. I'm going to put this at the bottom of my warmer box. This right here, this warmer box, I like this thing. This Cambro warming box because it holds heat. I mean, this thing will hold all day almost. And it'll be warm and hot just in between the same way I did when I put it in up to eight hours. So, I mean, it's a real good investment. But if you don't have one of those, just put it in a cooler. Uh, put it in a pan, put it in a cooler. You can wrap it in a towel while it's in a, um, put your paper on foil. Or you can put it just in a pan by itself. So, the time we come back, guys, we're going to be um, slicing this baby up. Stay tuned for that. All right, guys. Welcome back. Guess what? It is slicing time. We have finished. The brisket has been resting since 5 o'clock this morning. So, about four hours. Um, the longer you let this rest, I've come to find out the better it is as far as tenderness and juiciness because all that juice it just draws back up into the meat so i'm gonna take it out the warmer and then we'll put it on this cutting board and we'll show you what it looks like see if you approve look we got it on a cutting board got it in the paper you can see all that it held that juice pretty good this butcher paper it holds the juice real good and it's a good insulator so let's just unwrap it let's get this bad boy open Ooh, don't want to use none, lose none of that. Open it up. All right. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to flip it back over. Right there. Look at that nice bark. That is beautiful. So this is my indication mark that's on this side right here. And I'm just going to cut a little piece of that off just to show you. And in the beginning, a little more so right there. It might be a little um, hard on some of the bottom, but it's not even really hard right there. So let me just cut some more slices. You want to cut about a quarter inch slice right there. Nice. Real tender, guys. I mean, look at that. That is, is drooping over. As a matter of fact, let's come here and take this point. And like what I like to do, I like to cut it right here in the middle, right there, and just open it up. Let's open this up. Look at all that. And I'm not gonna squeeze it. I'm gonna let that right there. I'm just gonna let that juice run. And look at all the juice running right there, guys. I mean, it looks real good right there let's just zoom in if we can 
I mean that that looks good. I mean wow. And that is the point. And what I usually do with the point, you got some of the flat running right here. And a lot of point, you see how the grain runs and the flat still going like this. You can separate this and you can um, still cut from some flat right there. But what I usually like to do, I used to like to maybe cut it in half. And on the back end right here, this is where you'll get your burn ends right here. Just cut that off. You can put that back on the smoker, dip a little sauce, put it in a pan, whatever you want to do and make burn ends. Let's cut some more, uh, more of this, this, I want to get a good slice for y'all. So I'm going to come down here, right there, separate that, cut about a quarter inch cut because to me, right there, I'm trying to cut on paper too, guys. So there we go. So I'm going to bring this up. I'm going to, oh, let it droop. Look at that. That's a thick slice right there, and it wants to break apart, but it's not too overdone either. So um, that's just showing you what that looks like. You got a small little smoke ring right here on the bottom. Good, nice piece of fat. I mean, that is that is good. Even if I hold that big part, it kind of droops over. That's a that's a half inch cut, guys. So there you go. I mean, just show you what it you know tastes like. I like the little ends right here. And I'll taste this one. And um, shoot, I can't you can't see me on camera, but I mean that's damn, that's good. So mm -mm -mm. I hope y'all enjoyed this video and stay tuned for more. I'm sorry I've been a while, but this one came out real good. Toothpicks.